Welcome back, uh, it's Dr. Clark here. This is the next in the little tutorials on using uh, AD Instruments chart to do uh, some analysis. Uh, here we have our grip uh, force data and we want to ask a very simple question. We want to ask what is the change in heart rate over time um, when using uh, isometric exercise such as this. And these are, are our heart rate data down the bottom here and between this start point and this end point is the period in which we want to measure our changes in heart rate. Well, the first thing to do is work out how long this data set is. So uh, does it start from here and end to here? So how many, how many minutes or seconds is that? Uh, um, in order to see what the time is, we can look in the top right hand corner of the screen. You'll see out there it says 30 point or 30 seconds, 31.2 seconds, etc. But if you notice, the actual experiment starts on 9.6. So we can, first of all, bring this window up by clicking on this uh, number up here and dragging it. And this now shows us the time on the screen in big numbers. But then we want to see it in relation to the start. So we can use a little marker down here and drop that on the start of our experiment. And now it tells us the change in time you got previous, prior to the actual start, and after the start. So we got from zero through to the end here, which happens to be at one minute and eight seconds. So one minute and nine seconds, roughly, is the end of our experiment. So we want to look at these data, and we want to find out the changing heart rate. We could just hold our mouse over each of these positions and look at the number that says over here, and just copy them down onto a piece of paper and write them on a graph. Um, it's one way of doing it, it's not a very accurate way of doing it, because what you're doing is you're indiscriminately choosing time points based on instantaneous readings of heart rate. You can see here the heart rate kind of fluctuates, goes up, fluctuates a bit and comes down. So to get a true representation of the changes over time, you can put these data into bins, so sections of a finite amount of time, let's say 5 or 10 second sections, and then plot the data from the 5 or 10 second sections. In order to do this kind of binning technique, we can use either the um, DVM and a lot of maths, or we can use what's called the data pad. The data pad is what's hiding behind a spreadsheet, uh, behind this data sheet, and here it is here. So this is our data pad. Let's close that for a second. This is our data pad. Um, and the data pad is an Excel spreadsheet, essentially, with a series of rows, which are our sampling points, and a series of columns, which are our data that we are sampling. Uh, this example we've got set up to show grip force, blood pressure, and heart rate means, so averages over a selection period. Also, this has got a grip force maximum and time maximum. I'm going to close those and show you how you do them, because those are the ones that I've added myself in this data set. So we've got grip force, blood pressure, and heart rate. Let's say we want to add the time at which the data was recorded. So we click on thing and we go to selection and active point and we can choose time. And now it shows us the time at the data that we've selected. You'll see here the top row, row number one, has a little line between it and row number two. That's because row number one is showing the data at the point where we've selected. So this little black line here, if I slick various black lines, let's put it here, we can see that the heart rate at this point is 106 and the blood pressure is 139. So if we go to our data pad, lo and behold, 106, and a mean blood pressure is 156. But we've got the, the data appearing there, and there's the time. So let's check on E, and let's, for this, for this one, because we're going to use these data later, let's uh, look at the statistics, and let's do a maximum value derived from the grip force, which is the first channel. And there we are. So that's going to give us the maximum deflection. So let's go back to our chart, and let's think about now about doing this analysis. Um, we can zoom in and we can highlight various things and select various things. At the moment, the little M is dropped on this channel, which is the grip force. So what we're going to see in this window is grip force in relation to the M. Just as we're seeing time as a, uh, as a factor of M, we're also seeing the grip force increase. So it's a change in grip force. So depending where you drop the M, you'll see that over here in the... Uh, window, you see numbers appearing. If we drop that over here to show a zoomed view, there is zero, and we're going changes in grip force. You can see it's dropping down, always increasing. We don't mind in this instance that we're measuring delta 
change in grip force up here because what we're interested in is the heart rate. So we're going to leave that little blob, little M line on this channel uh, and then concentrate on heart rate. So we're going to just zoom out to see our heart rate and we're going to use the delta time which we're going to bring up into a big window here in order to select accurately areas of data. So let's choose a bin. Let's decide that we're going to choose our heart rate every five seconds. So we hold our cursor at as close to zero as we can get, which is about there, and I'm going to select five. So we select that until it says delta five. I can zoom in and be a little bit more accurate. So let's uh, do it a little bit more accurate. So there's 5.01, that's going to have to do for me. So 5.01 seconds. Now if I go to my data pad, you'll see that my mean heart rate was 73.9. I can add a sample at this point to the data pad by either going Command, Add to data pad, or pressing the Control D. Uh, you've also got this little data pad window, which if you can't see, you can right click and make sure you can see the data pad um, menu here. And by clicking on this, add to data pad, we've now added the data that was selected here to the data pad. Go to the data pad and have a look. And there we are. Here is the data pasted into the data pad. So back to our chart view. Now we can choose the next five seconds. So we've got from 4.99. to 10.03, that's good enough, and we'll press Add to Data Pad. Just to check, we've now got two data sets, okay, from 0 and 5 seconds. Let's go back to our data pad, uh, back to our chart view, and let's select the next 5 seconds. So we select from 10 through to 15, add that to our data pad, and then we'll choose from 15 through to 20, add that to our data pad. And you can see we can do this for the rest of the data file. I'm not going to spend the next five minutes here clicking on it, but here we've got up to and including 25 seconds. Go to our data pad, and we've now got a series of data, 0, 5, 10, 15, and 20 to 25 seconds in five-second bins. And if you want to put these uh, data into Excel, very, very easy. We just highlight the cells, just drag and drop as you would do in every other program. Go to Edit and Copy. We've got Excel running in the background, so I'll go to Excel and we can go Paste. And it's pasted these data into our Excel spreadsheet. Uh, we can expand these cells so we can see all the data and how we have mean heart rates in five second bins, which we could then, if we wanted to, add a, um, a legend here, so this is 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. We could copy these data to this point, and we could plot ourselves very simply a little graph just to see what the changes in heart rate are. Of course, Excel does strange things with your graph, so uh, be careful when using Excel to uh, plot certain kinds of data, but in this case we can see a change in heart rate. Let's uh, edit this scale so it's actually something a little bit more representative of something we want. So we'll leave that as minimum of zero, and let's put the maximum of 120. And there we can see a trend showing the increase in heart rate. So that's a very simple way of using the data pad to move data from within chart into Excel for then doing further analysis. Of course, going into uh, back into chart here, you could also use these data to do other things. So we could look at the grip force, because we've already got these data now. So we can see how good our subject was at maintaining 50% uh, grip force. You can see it's 8, 6, 7, 7, 6. So whatever that was, it, it looks fairly consistent and constant. 
Um, of course, we're looking at mean blood pressure. That's fairly irrelevant in the context of this experiment because the blood tra pressure trace is from the finger using the um, using the pressure monitor. So um, we don't want to use that, but you could easily set up some calculations, which we'll come to in another tutorial. So I hope that's helped in uh, giving you some basic use of the data pad to bin your data and copy it into Excel.